for this tutorial. So I was online today and somebody asked a question about saving presets and parameters in Max, which was, I thought, a pretty useful way to talk about Max's pattern system, which is more or less the best way to do that. Um, so specifically, this person uh, was, was really having trouble with the pattern system. They'd been playing with it, and their goal is to be able to save all the settings and UI object parameters in a patch uh, simply, right, uh, just with one click or whatever. And then they wanted to be able to load that preset when the patch loads. So they just want basically to be able to do things in a patch, close it, save it, go away, come back, and open the patch and have all of those uh, objects be set to the same values. So if they you know, finish their session and everything looks like this, they want to reload, uh, open their patch later, and have it look like that. And also, importantly, they want it to be so that if they make a bunch of changes and they don't save those changes, the, uh, the patch asks them, hey, do you want to save these changes that you've made? So let's talk about how to do that. And I want to start just a little bit by talking about kind of what are these different things that you can save. So on one level, you could save the max patch. Right, the max pat file. And what you're doing when you do that is actually saving the patching itself. What objects are in the patch? How are they connected? What are the arguments applied to those patches? And some UI elements like the contents of message boxes and things like that, but not so much the values of a lot of UI objects. Right. Another thing that you can save is a preset file. Which will be in either JSON or XML format, and we'll we'll show you that. And then you can also save presets themselves to uh, to preset files. And so, what this person is sort of getting into is number one: how do we recognize all the elements in a patch that need to be stored to presets? How do we store those presets? How do we keep track of that preset file and then how do we, and save it? And then how do we reload that file when the patch is reopened? So let's get into it. I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit. So first thing we wanna do is create a pattern storage. And we're gonna call it params. And pattern storage is sort of the home for all of our objects that need to be saved with presets. And here I have a bunch of UI objects, and I want to have presets that allow me to have different configurations of these objects and, and save those. So the first thing that I need to do is sort of make it so that these this pattern storage system can recognize these objects. By double clicking the pattern storage object, I can see what uh, client objects or what sort of preset enabled objects it recognizes. And if I do that, I can see that right now there aren't any at all. Um, so let's add these. There's a few ways to do it. The Usually the simplest way is to add an auto pattern to your patch, and then go to each of your UI objects, and just give them a name. And those names have to be unique you can see that actually some of these already had some, so they would have been in, they would have been included once the auto pattern object got added. Now, if I double click this, you can see that we have three. Although we don't have our slider, where why isn't our slider? Let's try again, slider, and we'll give it the name slider one. How about there? It is okay. And if you watch this client objects window. I'm just going to rearrange things a bit here. You can see that as I change things, the values in the client window actually change. So this is essentially telling us what is the current state of all of the patter enabled objects in the max patch. And like I said, you can either open that by double clicking the patter storage object or you can send a message client window. In addition to the client window, 
there is also a storage window. And the storage window shows is this stored presets. So this is just the client window is just the current state. The storage window is going to be any presets that we have saved. And right now we don't have any. We can do that by sending a message store and then some number that tells it which slot to store the preset to. So now we have one. And you'll notice if I come over here and I start changing things, you can see the value of slider one is changing in the client window, but it isn't changing in the storage window. And the reason for that is we haven't restored anything when we change this value. We're just modif we, we, we've just, uh, we're just changing the current sort of live state of the patch. If we wanted to restore it, we could do that by just clicking store one again. We can recall the patch by just sending the integer that indicates that that preset. So if I change things around here and I click one, it'll snap back. Another really good way to do this is to use the preset object. And what you do is you give it an, uh, an attribute called pattern storage, which is the name of the pattern storage object that you want it to be linked to. And then we can use this. So if I change things around again, and then I click this upper left hand box, it'll snap back. And I can also add a new one by shift and clicking in a box. And then I can recall just by clicking. Okay. So now we've gotten as far as adding objects to our pattern system. We've created a couple of presets. The next thing that we need to do to be able to get these presets back after we've closed and reopened our patch is to save them to a file. So well, what I'm going to do is send the message write XML. And when I do that, it's going to open a dialog and ask me what I want to call it. And by default, it's going to use the name of the pattern storage object. So that looks good. I'll save that. And so now, if I actually open that file, there it is. So you can see that all of the data for our two slots is saved here. So now let's get into the further questions. So they want to be able, this person, to load the entire preset upon opening the patch and prompt the user to save change safe if changes are made. So let's break those into two things. So the first is they want to be able to load the preset upon opening the patch. So in order to do that, we need to do two things. First, we need to make sure that when the patch loads, the pattern storage knows to load this file. And then we need to tell it to recall one of the presets, presumably the first one. So what we'll do is just give it the attribute auto restore one which will tell the pattern storage object every time the match, max patch loads, open with this object the most recently saved file, which in this case will be params.xml. And then when it does that, it's going to let us know that it did that by sending a message out of this in, uh, outlet that says uh, read params.xml1, which, and the one simply means that that was the, the reading was successful. So we can simply just put a message here that says select read. I'm sorry, not a message rather, but a select object with the, with the key read. So that when the, the XML file has been read in, it lets us know and we get a bang and that bangs the number one into our pattern storage. And in fact, what would be even better would be to send it into our presets object, because then we will see the, box, the correct box light up. Because right, if I say, if I send two here, the preset object doesn't actually pay attention to that messages you send directly to pattern storage. It would be nice if it did. But if I send two to the preset object, then it will switch it. 
So what we're basically doing is auto restore, we'll load the XML file. Once pattern storage has notified us that that's happened, it will recall that first preset. Great. So now the final thing that we have to do is make it so that the user is prompted if changes are made to the patch. So say I've opened the patch, preset one is loaded, and I start messing around with things, right? And then I close my patch. I want it to tell me, hey, are you sure you want to save, or do you want to save? And then if I save, it should update this preset one with the new data and also save the file, right? So let's see what happens if I move things around. Actually, let me first load the, the, uh, the preset and move things around. And now I'm just going to close this. OK, so I didn't get anything. I'll zoom in again. And the reason is that Max and Pattern Storage doesn't do that by default. But we can make it do it by giving it the attribute dirty one. So now, and I'm actually going to save first because I changed some aspect of the patch. And when we say dirty and max, you'll see that sometimes. Dirty basically means the patch needs to be saved, or changes have been made that are savable. And usually this, the thing that dirties a patch is moving an object, adding one, changing something in the actual patching. Usually changing the, uh, the settings of UI objects like this won't dirty a patch. But now that we've set dirty one uh, attribute here, it will. So I've, I've moved things around, and now I'm going to try to close the patch, and it's going to ask me if I want to save. Now, what I'll be saving is not the preset or the pattern, anything related to pattern. It's simply just saving the max patch. In order to get it to actually save the preset and the file, we need to add a save bang which will basically make it so that anytime we save the max patch, we get a bang. And then what we can do is just say store one, and then write again. And write again is basically another word for save. So if I were to say write and send that to the pattern storage object, it's a bit like save as. It will pop up a dialog and ask us, what is the name that you want to give this? If I say write again, it's like save in the sense that it's just going to save to the last file that it that it saved to prior. So I'll connect to this. And so I'm going to save because I changed some of the patching. And then I will load preset one. And then I'll change some things. And then I'm going to close the patch. And it didn't ask me to do anything. Why is that? Let me change some things here. OK, so that time it worked. I don't know why it didn't the first time. I must have done something wrong. But you get what's happening here. Let's test it one more time and make sure it works. So I'm going to change things. We know that we're on preset 1. I'm going to move this so it looks like this, really crazy. I'm going to close it. I press, press Command W. It's going to say, do you want to save? I'm going to say yes. And then I'm going to reopen it. And it's restored it back to its original state. So that's all we needed to do. Um, I suppose one thing that we could do is add something down here. So when we recall a patch, or a preset rather, it's going to tell us, the predator storage object will tell us that it did that by saying recall and then some value. So perhaps a thing that we could do would be to do pack store i and then pass that in, and then 
and then do a T L or T right again L. So now what this is going to do is basically instead of always saving the current state to the um, to the first preset, it'll be whatever the last saved preset or sorry the last recalled preset was. So assuming the user like decides there's a new preset that they create and it becomes their new favorite, then what's going to happen is that when they close the patch, that's actually the one that's going to get saved. And then that's also the one that's going to get recalled on the patch load. So that's that. I hope that makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.